there, it's Professor Shannon Gracie from Miracosta College. Today we'll be covering Section 5.2 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Text. Um, this covers natural logarithmic function uh, integration. So basically, you figured out what the derivative of the natural logarithmic function was. Now you'll find out when you have a result of the natural log function um, in a basic formula. All right. It's also used a lot in U substitution um, or in you know the integral of composite functions. Okay, so let's uh, warm it on up by differentiating these functions with respect to x. So pause the movie and warm it on up. You can do it. Okay, let's see how you did. So remember, we need to be strategizing here. So when I look at this one, I'm thinking to myself, okay. I have a product, it's x times natural log at 5x. So y prime is equal to, remember we'll have the derivative of the first, which is 1, times natural log at 5x plus x times the derivative of the second one, which is going to be good. The derivative of the inside is 5 over what was originally inside the function. Right? And as you notice, prime is, so I'll write this as, let's see, a lot of stuff divides out, doesn't it? We also have these x's here will divide out to be 1. So at the end of the day, we will get 1 plus natural log at 5x as our result. How'd you do? Awesome. All right. So here we go. We have uh, this guy, which is going to need to be differentiated. Great, implicitly. But first, I'm going to use properties of logs, but just on the left side. I have the log of a product is the sum of the logs. And over here, a log of a sum is just the log of a sum. You can't do anything more there. So now differentiating both sides with respect to x, we will have, good, 1 over x is the derivative with respect to x of natural log at x. And then what are we going to have? We're going to have dy dx is the derivative with respect to x of y, and that will be over y. So then on this side, we're going to get, I'll break this one up more, we'll have ddx of what's inside the log divided by what's inside the log. So that's going to be our overall derivative um, after simplifying. So here we'll have 1 over x plus dy dx times, I'll write it as 1 over y, is equal to d dx of x is just 1, and d dx of y is great, dy dx, and that's all going to be over, oops, sorry, x plus y. Good so far? Great. Okay, so now, Let's go ahead and um, let's clean this up a little. Let's multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which will be x times y times x plus y to clean this up. So we'll have x times y times x plus y. And then remember, you're distributing it through. So um, on both of these, actually, this guy will just divide out. So on this one, you'll have the x plus y portion divides out. And then we'll be distributing through you know, the x, y to these. And on the other side, um, we've got to be a little careful. So when we distribute the first one, we'll, the x's will divide out. So we'll end up with y times x plus y 
times 1 plus the second one, the y's will divide out, so we'll have x times x plus y times dy dx times 1. And then that's equal to xy plus xy times dy dx. Okay, so now let's uh, clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to, I want the dy dx's to be on the same side. So we're going to have x times x plus y dy dx minus x times y dy dx is equal to x times y minus y times x plus y. So now if I factor out a dy dx, I'll have x times x plus y minus xy and that's equal to, actually let me move this over more, sorry. So we'll have, let's see, dy dx equals x times x plus y minus xy and that's all equal to I can factor out a y and I'm left with x minus the quantity x plus y All right, so now dy dx, I'm going to divide both sides by, and I'm sorry, this is not equals, that's times. So dy dx will be equal to, I'm dividing by the factor to the right, that big factor right here, right? That's going to equal to y and then x minus x minus y. So I'll get y times negative y divided by, so I'm going to work on, I can factor out an x with this guy. So I'll have divided by x times x plus y minus y. So then dy dx will be equal to negative y squared over x squared. And we're done. That one was kind of cool. Okay? All right, so log rule for integration. So basically here, if u is a differentiable function of x, then the integral of 1 over x dx is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And the integral of 1 over u, sorry, my bad, let's rewrite this whole thing. This is the integral of 1 over u du is natural log at absolute u plus c. Okay, so, um, so here, it, remember how you can check by differentiating your result to make sure that you get the integrand. So here we're gonna we're just gonna check each of them. So what we want to know is does the derivative of the natural log at absolute value of x right, is this equal to oh and that's plus c, my bad. Is that equal to one over x? So, let's do it. Remember that the derivative of the natural log of an absolute value is still going to give us just 1 over x, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So, 
clearly 1 over x equals 1 over x, so we verified it. Over here, we want to know, does the derivative with respect to x... So now let's just practice, right? So this one, if you just kind of rewrite it in exactly the format, this can be rewritten, the 10 can come out, then you have the integral of 1 over x dx. So that has a result of 10 times natural log at absolute x plus c. So this whole thing, this whole indefinite integral, has this output um, is an antiderivative, and then the plus c gives you um, the antiderivative. Now, you have to be a little careful. Let's not box this quite yet. <laughs> it's very good to start getting used to this. Now, think about this. If you have an absolute value and it's raised to an even exponent, you don't need the absolute value anymore. So here, if we brought that 10 in, you'd have this situation, wouldn't you? So the best answer for this is natural log at x to the 10th plus c. Okay, so I would accept this one here, and actually we can re-highlight that, right? But um, I, I would accept this one here, but the, um, but the best answer, of course, is, um, and you'll probably be called on this in Calc 2 if you take it um, with our staff here, um, you'll, you'll need to recognize when you can remove that absolute value like that. Okay, so what about this guy? Remember, you're going to be using all of your skills here. So let's do what we usually do. Let's rewrite the integral as a product. So then we would have 5 minus x cubed to the negative 1 half with respect to x. Now let's go back for different formulas for you. It's good for you to look at this, these different forms. Um, oftentimes you'll see it as u to the minus 1 du is natural log at absolute u plus c. You might also see it as the integral of du over u is natural log at absolute u plus c. Um, so here, let's see what we have. Do we have a negative 1 power anywhere? No, so this is our old stuff, isn't it? So our u substitution would be 5 minus x cubed. Our du dx would be equal to negative 3x squared. Isolating dx, we would have negative 3x squared over, whoops, I did it backwards, du over negative 3x squared, and then we hope that we got the right substitution. We check it out and make sure all the x's are gone. So this would be the integral of x squared times u to the negative 1 half times du over negative 3x squared. So let's see what everything was. This was our u. This here was our d x and let's see if the x squared divides out. It does, so we're good to go. So rewriting, we'd have the integral and actually let's uh, get that constant out of there. So negative one-third times the integral of u to the negative one-half du. Now sometimes once people learn, you know, this new result for um, the antiderivative of 1 over something with respect to the something. They want to put that result all the time. But this is just our general power rule. So this is just going to be negative one-third times u to the positive one-half over positive one-half. I increased it by one plus c, which is going to give us negative two-thirds. What was our u? Good. Our u was five minus x cubed, it's now to the positive one half after integrating, plus c. And we're all done.
And so remember, this is our replacing of our U and cleaning it up a bit. Okay, next up. Let's see what we have going on. So this one will end up being the integral of x times quantity 1 minus x squared again to the negative 1 half with respect to x. So what do you think? I don't know, let's check it out. It doesn't have any minus 1 power on there when I've written it this way. So let's try u is equal to 1 minus x squared du dx is negative 2x and dx isolated would be du over negative 2x so then we'll have the integral of x times u to the negative one half and then dx was du divided by negative 2x Okay, so fortunately the x's divide out and cleaning it up a bit we'll have negative one-half times the integral of u to the negative one-half du which will be using our general power rule negative one-half times u to the positive one-half over one-half plus c and we'll end up just getting negative 1 minus x squared to the positive 1 half plus c. Because the twos will divide out. Good so far? Great. Okay, so now let's look at this guy. See what we have going on. So for this one, again, we have a, a definite integral this time. So first of all, let's just check it out. We've got the integral from e to e squared of x to the negative 1 times natural log at x, that whole quantity to the negative 1, with respect to x. So here we have something raised to the negative 1, and the real sneaky thing is it's the natural log um, function. So really, um, it's kind of a gift when, you're, when you have a natural log uh, term or factor actually be factor in, um, in your integral because that has to be your u substitution, right? You otherwise, um, because there's no def, there's no integral formula that has natural log at x inside of it, right? So here we go, or at least not at our level. You know, you can get it using a table, um, which basically is using integration by parts. So if we say that u is equal to natural log at x, du dx is equal to, good, 1 over x. So isolating dx, we would get x times du. So actually, we, gotta, we have to do one more thing. So u evaluated at the lower limit e is natural log at e, which is 1 and u evaluated at e squared is natural log at e squared, which will be good, too. So now we've got everything set up. So now with the change of the limits of integration, we're going from 1 to 2. We've got x to the minus 1 times u to the minus 1. And then in for dx, we have x times du. and then our limits of integration we got from doing this stuff. Okay, so here we go. Now, do you see that we have x to the negative one times x to the one, which is x to the zero? So just in case um, you have an issue with that, I'll write it. And we'll have u to the minus one du, which x to the zero is just one. So we'll have the integral from one to two of u to the minus 1 du. So now this will have a result of 
beautiful natural log at absolute u and then we're evaluating it, evaluating it from u equal to 1 to u equal to 2. So this is just going to give us natural log at absolute 2 minus natural log at absolute 1. But what is natural log at absolute 1? It's just 0, right? And 2 is positive, so the absolute value of 2 is 2. So we'll just have natural log at 2 minus 0, which is natural log at 2. Cool? Awesome. All right, next up. It just really takes practice, guys. <laughs> so let's see. Um, why don't you give it a shot using those techniques? So pause the movie and see how you do. Okay, so if I rewrite this one here as the integral from 1 to e of the quantity 1 plus natural log at x squared times x to the minus 1 times dx, let's see what happens. So I definitely have something complicated in the 1 plus natural log at x, the quantity squared. So that's what I'm going to set as my u. just the inside of that. So my du dx will be great. It's going to be 0 plus 1 over x, which is just 1 over x. And then dx will be x times du. And then evaluating u at the lower limit, 1, we'll get 1 plus natural log at 1, which is 1 plus 0, or 1. Evaluating u at e, We'll get 1 plus natural log at e, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So, let's see what we get. So this will be the integral from 1 to 2 of u squared times x to the minus 1 times x du. So n for dx I have x times du and n for my u is the 1 plus natural log at x. So again I have the situation where I have x to the negative 1 times x which just gives us 1. So this is equivalent to the integral from 1 to 2 of u squared du. So now we have just a general power rule. So this will be u cubed over 3 evaluated from u is 1 to u is 2. So we'll have 2 thirds minus 1 third, which will be actually 2 cubed, my bad, over 3 plus 1 cubed over 3. So that would be 8 minus 1, which is 7 over 3. Okay? Good so far? Awesome. All right, so our next item, again, I think it's really good to rewrite it as a product. This one's an indefinite integral. So this will be x to the negative 2 thirds times 1 plus x to the 1 third, this quantity raised to the negative 1, and then with respect to x. So here, the thing that looks the most complicated to me is u equal to 1 plus x to the 1 third. So du dx will be equal to, uh, the 1 will zero out and we'll have, we'll have 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. So isolating dx will end up with what? It'll actually be 3x to the positive 2 thirds times du with a little bit of algebra. Now, no limits of integration to change, so we're good to go on that. So let's make sure that those x's go away. So we'll have x to the negative 2 thirds times u to the minus 1 
times 3x to the 2 thirds times du. Okay, so here's our dx and our u is this guy. And notice that x to the negative two-thirds times x to the positive two-thirds is just one. And we can pull out that three. So we're going to get the integral of, or three times the integral of u to the minus one du, which is good, three times natural log at absolute u plus c. But since this is an indefinite integral, we have to back substitute. So we'll get three times natural log at absolute 1 plus x to the 1 third plus c. Now uh, 1 plus x to the 1 third can take on negative values and the 3 as a multiplier to the natural log is could re just results in um, natural log at the absolute value of 1 plus x to the 1 third the quantity cubed plus c. So rewriting it that way didn't really help. Um, either answer is fine in this case. All right, next up. What do we have for this guy? What do you think? I mean, you could try factoring, right? But we might need to use that, that a word. What's, what starts with a, it's not a bad word. It helps us with, with calculus. Good, algebra. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to the side and I'm going to use, you can either use long division or synthetic division, whatever you want. Um, what, we have x cubed plus 0x squared minus 6x minus 20. So I need... Um, and x squared, I'll get x cubed plus 5x squared, and I have to subtract that whole thing, and I'm going to end up with, what, good, negative 5x squared, and then I bring down the minus 6x, so now, matching up uh, the next one, I need to have a negative 5x. And when I multiply through the binomial, I'll have negative 5x squared minus 25x, subtracting, we'll end up with Let's see, positive 25x. So I think we'll have 19x, and then you need to bring down the minus 20. And so now I'll have plus 19, and we get 19x minus, so 200 times 5 is 1,000, or I'm sorry, <laughs> 20 times 5 is 100. Um, so 19 times 5 would be what? And then when we subtract this, we have a remainder of positive 75. So what we found from this guy here is that we can rewrite this integral as the integral of x squared minus 5x plus 19 plus 75 over x plus 5. We have that remainder, okay? So now, what we may, you know, what we may want to do is this, split the integrals. So if you look at it like this, everything is pretty basic. We have, you know, this polynomial in x here. Oh, and this is all with respect to x. And then we could add to that the integral of 75 over x plus 5 dx. So now, 
what will happen is we'll have, beginning to integrate this guy, we'll have x cubed over 3 minus 5x squared over 2 plus 19x. That's the result of the first indefinite integral. I'll do the plus c at the end. Plus 75 times the integral of x plus 5 to the minus 1 dx. So if you want to use a u sub, you can. Um, our u would equal to x plus 5 du dx is just going to be 1. So dx equals du. So sometimes at the once people see that, they'll, they'll be like, oh, I could just use the x plus 5 still. But that's okay. If you're not ready for that kind of pattern recognition, don't worry about it. So rewriting our result from the first one. And plugging in the, the u was here and then dx was equal to du. So now we have x cubed over 3 minus 5x squared over 2 plus 19x plus 75 times natural log at absolute u plus c and then back substituting we will have so what was our original x plus 5 so we need to keep those absolute value bars the 75 won't help us so I'm not going to rewrite it the other way I'll just leave it like this okay so to recap what did we do we rewrote the rational expression that is the integrand um, by using long division and then we split the integral you don't have to but it might be less intimidating if you split that integral because um, you only need a u substitution on that last part of it and then um, we used our awesome rules and integrated fin or completed finding the indefinite integral okay so what about this guy? We know that the derivative with respect to theta of tangent theta is secant squared of theta. But remember, we don't have an integration formula for that. But we could rewrite this integral as sine theta divided by cosine theta with respect to theta. And that's the integral of sine theta times cosine theta to the minus 1 d theta. So if I let u equal cosine theta, du d theta would be what? Beautiful, negative sine theta. And then isolating d theta, we would have du over negative sine theta. So let's see if that works out. So this would be the integral of sine theta times u to the minus 1 and in for d theta we have du over negative sine theta. And fortunately, the sine thetas divide out, and we can bring the negative 1 outside the integral. So we'll end up getting negative u to the minus 1 du, which is negative natural log absolute u plus c. And that gives us negative natural log absolute cosine theta plus c. Now, if you want to play around with it, I mean, there is another um, formula that you could, you could derive using properties of logs, 
but this is the one that you know you should memorize this you don't have to derive this um, hopefully you'll just know that the antiderivative of tangent at theta d theta is negative natural log absolute cosine theta plus c okay so let's work on the rest of them <laughs> all right so for cotangent theta goes really similarly so please Try pausing the movie and see, you know, how you do. But this one, it can be rewritten as cosine theta over sine theta with respect to theta, which is cosine theta times sine theta raised to the negative 1 d theta. So if I let u equal to sine theta du d theta, will be beautiful one oh or I'm sorry du d theta will be cosine theta and then du d theta is equal to du over cosine theta so now we will have the integral of cosine theta times u to the minus one and then du, oh, I'm sorry guys, this was still d theta up here, still d theta, I miswrote that. And for d theta, we have du over cosine theta. So this is how everything uh, matches up. And then um, sine theta was our u this time. And notice the cosine thetas divide out and so we'll have the integral of u to the minus 1 du, which gives us natural log absolute u plus c. So we end up getting natural log absolute sine theta plus c. Okay? Okay, so this, uh, this next one has a bit of a, a trick. Okay, it's just one of those fun math tricks. Basically, you multiply by the secant theta plus tangent theta over, ah, secant theta plus tangent theta. Because what we're trying to do is think about a u substitution, and we need we need to have terms in there that are derivatives, uh, derivatives of something, so we can find the antiderivatives. So writing this pretty in a more pretty manner, we'll get the integral of secant squared of theta plus secant theta times tangent theta over secant theta plus tangent theta with respect to theta. So now I'm going to just go ahead and um, let u equal to the denominator. So du d theta will be equal to, good, secant theta times tangent theta for the derivative with respect to theta of secant theta, and then derivative with respect to theta of tangent theta is secant squared theta. And then isolating d theta, we will have du divided by Look at that, if I swap out the, if, or not swap out, if I, if I commute the terms, do you see I have my secant squared theta plus secant theta times tangent theta? So, going over here and rewriting, we will have the integral of secant squared theta plus secant theta times tangent theta all over secant, L over U 
that was our u sub. And then n for d theta, we have du divided by secant squared theta plus secant theta times tangent theta. Okay, so far, so here's our d theta. And then our u sub is here. And what happens is these guys divide out and we will have the integral of 1 over u du. When all the dust settles, <laughs> which is natural log absolute u plus c, which gives us beautiful natural log absolute secant theta plus tangent theta and then plus C. Okay so far? And again you're not going to be deriving these unless you forget them so you just need to memorize that formula. Alright next up what do you think the mean trick is? <laughs> If we multiply by, good, cosecant theta plus cotangent theta over cosecant theta plus cotangent theta, we'll get the integral of cosecant theta Actually, we're going to multiply them out. Cosecant squared theta plus cotangent squared, oops, plus cosecant theta times cotangent theta all over cosecant theta plus cotangent theta d theta. So then, letting our u equal to that denominator, which is cosecant theta plus cotangent theta, du d theta will be equal to negative cosecant theta times cotangent theta minus cosecant squared theta and then isolating d theta will have du over if I factor out the negative and then switch the terms I'll have cosecant squared theta plus co cosecant theta times sorry too many movies today cosecant theta times cotangent theta And then let's see what happens. So this will be the integral of cosecant squared theta plus cosecant theta times cotangent theta over u. And then in for d theta, we have du over negative cosecant squared theta plus cosecant theta times cotangent theta. All right, so this is all how it matches up. N for d theta, we've got du over all that stuff. And then N for u is this guy. So everything but the negative is divided out here. So we'll end up with negative integral 1 over u du, which is negative natural log absolute u plus c which gives us negative natural log absolute cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus our constant of integration. Coolio? Alright. 
So we've basically derived all of the trig antiderivatives, the basic ones for you. So these are old ones, remember? What is the antiderivative of sine at u du? It is perfect. Oops. It's going to be negative cosine at u plus c. And then this guy will be positive sine at u plus c. The tangent at u du is negative natural log absolute cosine at u plus c. And cotangent ended up being natural log absolute sine at u plus c. We derived all of these, so you can look at them again. Um, and then this guy was positive natural log absolute secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. And then this guy was negative natural log absolute cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus c. Okay? So now let's just get a, a little bit of practice with a differential equation. So we have an application. What did we do with this? We rewrote y prime as beautiful dy dx and then we have equals x plus 1 over x minus 1 and then what did we do? We multiplied both sides by dx. Perfect. So these dx's divide out and then we ended up with dy is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 1 dx. And then, remember, we can integrate both sides. So the left side will be integrating with respect to y, um, basically integrating 1 with respect to y, and we get a result of y. But we got to do a little work with the other side. So if you have a denominator which has a degree that is less than or equal to the numerator, you can divide. You can use long division or synthetic division. So let's let's do that. We're doing um, x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. So we would just get a 1 here. And then subtracting, see, you, this, now your algebra is useful, right? <laughs> you end up getting um, a remainder of 2, okay? So this is equivalent to the integral of 1 plus 2 over x minus 1 with respect to x. So, depending on how comfortable you are with integration, you may want to split it. The integral of 1 dx plus 2 times the integral of, I'll write it as 1 over x minus 1 dx. So here, what would, what would we do? We do our u is x minus 1, du dx is 1, so dx equals du. Um, so here, y equals so completing the integration on the first indefinite integral, we'll get x, we'll add the c at the end, and then we'll get plus 2 times the integral of 1 over u du. So we'll have y equals x plus 2 times natural log at absolute u plus c. But what was our u? It was x minus 1, and you're multiplying the natural log by 2. So the best answer is going to be x plus natural log at the quantity x minus 1 squared plus c. So that's using a combination of back substituting and properties of logs. Okay? All right. So next up we have r prime equals theta times tangent at theta squared. So what should we write instead of r prime? dr d theta, beautiful. 
because we have thetas in there. Now if we multiply both sides by d theta, it divides out on that left side. So we end up with dr equals theta times tangent at theta squared with respect to theta, or times d theta. And then integrating both sides, we'll have beautiful r equals. Now, if you need to do a u sub, you can. Uh, u would equal to theta squared. du d theta is 2 theta. So isolating d theta, you would get du over 2 theta. So rewriting it, we'll have theta times tangent at u times du over 2 theta. And matching everything up, uh, this is our d theta here. And our u sub was theta squared. And the theta divides out. So we will get r is equal to 1 half times the integral of tangent to u du, which gives us r equals 1 half times, good, negative natural log absolute cosine, actually, at, yeah, absolute cosine at u plus c, so r will equal to negative one half times natural log at absolute cosine at theta squared plus c, or if you want to, you could uh, write it as Ah, you know what? It doesn't really make it that much prettier. We'll leave it at this. Okay. All right. So, example three, I think might be our last, our last one. So, example three, we want to find. We have this demand equation for a product is P equals ninety thousand over quantity four hundred plus three x. We want to find the average price on a given interval. So, average price, doesn't that remind you of average value? Perfect, right? Average, it's an average value problem. So, remember the formula for an average value program, ah, program, average value problem is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of your function, whatever it is. Okay, so for us we're talking about average price. So our average price will be, so we have 1 over, good, 50 minus 40 times the integral from 40 to 50 of 90,000 over 400 plus 3x with respect to x. So that's going to give us 1 tenth times. I'm going to bring out that 90,000 times the integral of 400 plus 3x to the minus 1 dx. So if we let u equal to 400 plus 3x, du dx is equal to 3. So dx will equal to du over 3. So, 10 divides out one of those zeros, so we'll end up with 9,000, oh, and I'm sorry, we got to change our limits of integration. 
our limits on this one were from 40 to 50. So we need to figure out what is u at 40, and that's going to be 400 plus 120, which is 520, and u at 50 will be 400 plus 150, which is 550. So that'll give us 9,000 times the integral from 520 to 550 of u to the minus 1. And then in for dx, we had du over 3. So, bringing that 3 out and simplifying, 9,000 divided by 3 is 3,000 times the integral from 520 to 550 of u to the minus 1 du is going to give us 3,000 times natural log absolute u evaluated from u equals 520 to u equals 550, which will give us 3,000 times natural log of absolute 550 minus natural log at absolute 520. And then playing around with log functions a little bit, we have the difference of logs. So that would be 3,000 times natural log at 550 divided by 520, which gives us 3,000 times natural log at 55 over 52. So, the, which is approximately 3,000 times natural log 55 divided by 52, enter. Oops. 168.27 168.27 cuz it's a price so let's um so we can say the average price on the interval from 40 to 50 in inclusive is approximately, sorry about the dog, <laughs> approximately 168.27. All right, so have a great day, guys. I will talk to you soon. Bye.